have seen him on Comedy Central and HBO. He is one of my sweetest friends. Give it up for Paco Rubin! This is back there listening to you guys. I love it. This is the first time I've been in front of an audience that's more drunk than I am. You guys are no kale in the house. Been doing some dieting, been doing some keto. Keto is Latin for diarrhea all day. Ice cream want. Apparently, I'm not doing this dieting thing right. I just started doing intermittent feasting. Um, <laughs> Gaining weight. I don't understand. Ugh. Being a fat guy is awesome, though. You know, you know who doesn't get into a bar fight? Fat guys. We don't fight. Uh, if a guy comes up to me, he's like, "You want to fight?" I'm like, "Where in the parking lot?" Jesus. You know how far that is? So it's like a block away. I don't want to do that. Can I just buy you a beer or something? Call it good. Because if I go to the parking lot, my shoe comes untied, I'm going to have to find something to lean against. You know? Tie my shoe. That'd be bad. Uh, I've, I've been dating, though. Thank you. I've been dating. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Her name is Greta. The least sexiest name ever. She's, Esther. What's that? Elger. Esther. No, Greta. So, I like that you're... Are you a pimp? Are you, what is going on over here? Do you have... Girls that I can fuck? Are you, what are you, are you? Are, 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 she had, he had two Esters or Eskers? What is happening? You sure he didn't say Eskimo? Do you have two Eskimos? How many women are you pimping to me right now? You have a full table. What is this, the Santa Rosa Swingers Club? What is happening over here? Do you have all your keys on the table? Let's go. Anybody over here single that wanted to go still over there? Handsome Santa Claus? No? Nerve guy? Comfortable people, you want to go over there? Look how comfortable you are. Dave Matthews Band 91. Shit, girl. He's got a made up university on his hoodie. You've got a Dave Matthews Band 1991 on yours, man. Get out of the 90s, man. Let's, let's stop this thing. Well, you know what? Fuck Esther. I don't know who Esther is, but fuck Esther. I don't need her bullshit in my life. I got my own Greta. I got Greta, the least sexiest name compared to Esther. Maybe the second least sexiest name ever. Basically what we're doing is picking our grandmas out for some reason right now. Greta and Esther. Get in line, Heather! <laughs> Greta is... Charlotte. What's that? I'm Grandma Charlotte. You're Grandma Charlotte? Yeah. Fuck, yeah you are. <laughs> yes you are, Grandma Charlotte. GC, they call you GC for that good cunt. Okay. <laughs> Grandma Charlotte sounds like the worst 90s band ever. It's like, did you guys see Grandma Charlotte? No, I went to see Dave Matthews instead. Oh my god, it was only five bucks, it was the 90s. Remember that shit, the 90s, everything was five dollars. Did you get it for five dollars? I'll give you five dollars, it was awesome. Anyways, back to Greta. So... <laughs> Alright, you know what, I only, I'm only doing like a five minute set. You can just relax, let me handle it. I'm the professional here, you're the drunk one. Uh, no, no, you don't have to raise your hand, I've already called on you. I've already called on you, this is not a question and answer, so this is not, wait, wait, don't tell me. Although it would be cool if it was. Okay, all right, uh, Grandma Charlotte. He's up, uh, we can party after this, it's a hotel, I'll fuck you somewhere if you want. I mean, just, just, just ease up, just ease up, ease up. He's up, girl. Okay, damn. Big Paco's got the girls having them over here. Anyway, so, Greta, you, are you in show business? Well, keep your feet off the fucking stage, huh? Oh, the feet are so for everyone tonight. Everyone's getting it. That's it. You woke up the beast. Thank you, Steve, for playing along. Back to Greta. Um, She's awesome. She's German, so our safe word is Volkswagen. <laughs> She's like, speak dirty to me. So I said, I want to see your papers. 
she's fucking awesome. She's awesome. I feel like though, like the thing is, I like big girls. Okay, I like big girls. Uh, she's five foot ten, two hundred pounds. The Niners are taking a look at her. Um, <laughs> And finally, the little spoon in a relationship. It's awesome. It's very cuddly in there. Very cuddly. Uh, she, she's cool. But there, I feel like there's been like a gender, a gender switch, uh, Raymond. I feel like there's been a gender switch a little bit. Susan, follow me on this. Steve, too. Like, guys have gotten more sensitive, I feel. In my life, guys have gotten more sensitive. Women have gotten harder. For example, I will cry to this American Life podcast episode. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will cry to dog food commercial. You know, I'm like, they just want food. <laughs> Look at his face. You know, put his paw in my mouth. Ah, you know? I was driving with Greta the other day. I was crying at some podcast episode. Meanwhile, she's out the car flipping off cops out of the window. Just like, fuck you, pigs. You know, I'm like, they're leading a funeral. Maybe this is not the time for something like that. But she's into true crime stuff. You guys like true crime stuff? Yeah, she's introduced me to true crime stuff. Holy shit, man, I didn't know. Here's the other thing I didn't know about true crime. The, the, big, the biggest listeners and watchers of true crime podcasts and documentaries are whom? White men psycho. <laughs> white men psycho, psycho white men. Same thing, a difference without a distinction. Same fucking difference without a distinction. No, women, women are the largest audience of people who watch and listen to true crime. And it never made sense to me. I was like, women, why, why are they into serial killers? I don't get it. Because I'm like, their entire life, women have been told, like, don't go over there. Don't walk over there. It's stranger danger. You know, that's a bad. And they're like, well, I want to devote my life to the serial killers. This made no sense to me. Until I realized there's two, two things here. Women are natural detectives. They're naturally born fucking detectives, okay? Like, women are detectives. If all detectives and cops were women, there'd be no cold cases, ever. Everything would be solved by fucking 5 p.m. They would punch in at 9 p.m., punch, or a.m., punch out at 5 p.m., just be like, everything's fucking solved, okay? And then that guy cops like me would show up at 5.30 p.m. I'm like, oh, I guess I did a good job last night. No cold cases, you know? Like, uh, you know, like, especially like Greta. Like, I told Greta the other day, I was like, I'm going to go and hang out with my buddy David and just watch some YouTube videos, you know, drink some beers. And she's like, uh-huh. Okay, right. I come home, she's like, how was it? We had a couple beers, had a good time, and all of a sudden she turns into like a 1940s detective. She turns into Columbo. She's just like, I just got a couple more questions. <laughs> Nothing's really adding up there. Right? Like, where'd you get that trench coat? You don't smoke. And the other reason I think women like to watch true crime stuff is because women are competitive as fuck. Okay? Women watch that shit like, I ain't gonna end up like that bitch. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm gonna buy me in a trunk of car. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm taking notes on this shit. Okay? Awesome. Brad is cool though because she's very girly too. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, like, I grew up on a farm in Michigan with a bunch of brothers, you know, I don't, I, I, I call this look unemployed softball coach, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know from this girly stuff, you know, she loves that stuff, man, she, she's 38, and she has grown women friends come over to, to, to color with her, with crayons, color with crayons, for Christmas I got her a box of crayons, it was awesome, so cheap, I'm like, there's an extra red one, you know, <laughs> Got the little sharpener in the back. And her friends are all new agey, like Greta's. She's very new agey, so every Friday night my apartment's filled with the tire band of Fleetwood Mac. You know, a lot of flowing things and landslide, you know. <laughs> and then, so, so we just started dating, so uh, last month, you know, it was September uh, 13th, Friday the 13th. It was a palindrome. And do you guys know what else happened? Full moon. Yeah. Oh. To Greta, that was like Christmas comes in September. It was a full moon. We were asleep and she woke me up at midnight. She's like, Paco, full moon. I was like, oh, cool. Fuck, what do I do? <laughs> I still want to be supportive. I'll make coffee. I don't know what to do. <laughs> what do 
what you do. She was so excited. She's like, full moon, full moon, full moon, full moon. She's like, come on. So I'm like, I get up and I, I, I get here in the kitchen. So I go in the kitchen and she's got this mason jar full of crystals. And she's filling it full of water. And I was like, what kind of womanly princess wicking stuff is this? What is going on? I said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm making moon water. I was like, what the fuck is moon water? What is this? What have I, I, I gotten a key into the woman's life. I've never heard of moon water. And I said, what are you doing? She said, you get a mason jar. You fill it full of crystals. And then you fill it with water. And I said, all you've done is invented Bud Light. That's all. That's all Bud Light is. It's just a jar full of water that someone yelled racist words into, you know? So she's filling this up and she's saying stuff over the, like speaking in tongues, like, you know, I'm like, oh. this is awesome. For the next three months. And I'm like, anyways, so then she's like, follow me outside. I'm like, oh, the adventure continues. So I follow her outside and she, she's finding the moon outside. This is midnight and she's holding the mason jar full of crystals and tap water on the moon. And I live in the Tenderloin and in San Francisco. Even the crackheads are like, what the fuck are you doing? What is happening here? And she's trying to find the moonbeams. I'm like, come on, everybody! Make a moon water! <laughs> she's so awesome. She's so awesome. But she's done a couple things. That I gotta say to the ladies in the room, I don't know if any guys ever told you this thing, because we don't tell you everything, because we want to get laid and you know what I'm saying? But like there's two things that guys we hate. And I don't know if anyone's ever told you this. One is you guys feel like it's comfortable to put your dirty ass, cold ass feet in our lap. We don't like that shit. <laughs> We do not like that shit. Y'all on vacation, it's like, shoes off, socks off, boom, right next to your dick. You're like, fuck! I, it has to stay, though. I can't say anything. The other thing that we have, hate that we've never told you guys is when we're walking and all of a sudden you put your arm in our armhole and you hold on and we're just like, oh, fuck. Now what do I do? We have no idea what to do with that. We're just like, fuck, you stand up straight, you know? And I'm like, I guess I'm British now. Yeah. Yeah, I got eight more miles to go. <laughs> this is going to be fun. We've never been taught how to walk like that. We always try to get out of it and be like, look, a bird. <laughs> so, uh, look at over there. <laughs> but like I said, anybody here in the crystals? No, this is Northern California. All of you probably have crystals in your pockets, right? We were in, Greta and I were in Nashville, Tennessee, and we were driving, and she said, stop the car, crystal shop, and I was like, oh, fuck, how did you see that? That's amazing. It's like when salsa dancers hear salsa music, they'll just find a salsa room anywhere. It's like, boom, da, boom, da, boom, da, boom, da, boom, da, boom, it's salsa. So we got out of the car, and I was like, for one, it's crystals. I don't know anything about. Two, it's up some stairs, which I just don't want to get involved with. You know, like, there's a lot of stairs. And I'm like, I'll just be in the car listening to Steely Dan. <laughs> but she's like, no, come in with me. So I went up to this crystal shop. And I don't know if you guys, for those of you who have not been to a crystal shop, I'll paint the picture for you. They're <laughs> it's awesome. It's, they're tiny places, usually. They're, there's uh, usually, like, uh, uh, curtains everywhere. They're just full of curtains. Nothing's on a shelf, everything's in baskets for some reason, you know? You walk in and it's just a, a cloud of not chompa just everywhere. You're just eating not chompa They always have horrible, like, world music on. It's like, and you're like, like, where's the downbeat at? For some reason, there's always like 15 to 30 cats just rocking around, just mean bugging you the entire time. Like, hey, it's bad. what are you doing here? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and it's crazy, man. And then I was in this crystal shop. Uh, Greta was looking at uh, the crystals, and I, I looked over to the side of the shop, and I saw a basket that had a sign on it that said "Heated Healing Crystal Dildos." I was like, oh, hell no. 
Oh, hell no. If Crystal sees a basket of heated healing crystal dildos, I am no longer needed. I am no longer, they don't, she will not, I'll be as useless as Anne Frank's drum set. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will just be, there's no reason. I walk over there and she's like, I'm like sliding the basket under some fucking curtains, just putting cats, just grabbing cats. Around them, just hiding that stuff. We were, we were hanging out, and all of a sudden the curtains open up. And this little southern woman comes out. She's very nice. And she says, Namaste. But she's from the south, so she says, Namaste. <laughs> like, you sure? <laughs> she walks out. She's like this big. And she's like, hey, y'all. And I'm like, hi. And she's like, what's your name? I said, my name is Paco. What's your name? And I swear to God, my, my hand to God, she looked at me and she said, my name is Crystal. And I was like, God damn it! That's amazing! I was like, like, crystals, crystals? And she said, I never thought of that! Like, it's right there! How did you not think of that? So I said, what's the name of this shop? And she said, the Crystal Palace. And I'm like, that's a strip club! You own a strip club, basically. So she and Greta were hanging out, and I was just trying not to knock things over. You know, when you're doing your around like delicate things, you're like, I'm just gonna knock the entire store over at some point. She's gonna stand in the corner. Then all of a sudden, the curtains open up again. And then this little tiny, so everyone's tiny in the south. This little tiny southern guy comes out. He's got one good leg, one wooden leg. He looks like he's been through some bar fights, like rides a Harley Davidson. He's been through some wars. He looked at me, he was like, we haven't had customers here since 87. You know, like, what are you guys doing? And he had a Jack Daniels hat on. He had a t-shirt that said, kill a commie for mommy on it. With an eagle with an AK-47 it's beak flying over New Mexico for some reason. I'm not sure. And he comes over to me. He's like, hey, y'all, where are you from? And I was like, fuck. I don't want it to say San Francisco. <laughs> you feel that? Like, I don't want to get into a political debate in the crystal shop. You know, like, when you go back to Ohio and go to Thanksgiving, you sit next to Uncle Frank. You're like, god damn it. Well, this guy looks at me and he's like, you suck dick. And I was like, no, it's my girlfriend, Greta. And he's like, you gay? I'm like, I'm not gay just because I'm from San Francisco. And he's like, well, why not? I'm like, well, you have a wooden leg. That doesn't make you a table. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that didn't go over well. Uh, man. I've been seeing a therapist. I got anxiety. Anybody here got anxiety? Yeah, I like the quiet wave from the anxious people in the corner over there. Just barely can get your hand up, just like... Yes, and then the enthusiastic woo over there. Someone's on their riddle, and I love it. I love it. A couple things make me very anxious. Actually, the entire world makes me anxious, but there's two specific things. One, Netflix. And I'll tell you why. That 20 second countdown you get to the next episode, I never know what the fuck to do with that thing. I'm like, oh, fuck! <laughs> Someone make popcorn! What are we doing with fuck? Can I bring one? Do I have time this entire life to watch all of these? You know, it's like it's 20 seconds. You know, they should make it so you can set your own parameters. Just give me a week to think about it. 20 seconds? I don't do anything in 20 seconds, you know? The other thing that gives me a lot of anxiety is Costco. Man, Costco. Oh, don't pretend you don't shop at Costco, Santa Rosa. Costco's the fucking best, though, but I get super anxious in that place. Costco's awesome because you can go in and be like, give me a keg of mayonnaise, or uh, take a liter of tequila, four tires, and an eight-foot hot dog. Just call it a day. Costco's, I mean, I'm not trying to front, you know, because this, this is Kirkland's signature. Okay, so... I obviously do my shopping at Costco. Paco's not just wearing Kirkman tonight, girl. He's wearing Kirkman signature, okay? That make me pull the sass out, right? I don't know. Can you handle this sass? You want a cup of this sass? I don't think you can. Can you handle this sass? Yeah, you can, Richard. Yes, you can. I think David was talking about his dad shopping at Costco. Costco's awesome for dudes. It's perfect for dudes because they put our clothing in a trough in the middle of the store. It's just a mountain of denim that you can see from the front. There's like, there's, those are my pants over there. You know? 
And they're so cheap, you don't have to try any of them on. They're five bucks. Like, I'll take 12, I guess. Oh, I'm like, they don't even have a changing room at Costco. It's like, if you had to try something on, you'd be like, next to the pretzels. You'd be like, give me some room over here. Costco when you're stoned is awesome, though. Costco when you're stoned is like a video game, man. You go in there and it's like, <laughs> you're like, ah, you like, points are going up. People come out of nowhere and be like, would you like some nourishment? You're like, ah. <laughs> they even have this wizard at the end with this yellow wand. It's like, let me see a receipt. <laughs> Can I pass through? That's what makes me anxious. That lady with that fucking highlighter, man. I'm just like, fuck. Because you never know where your receipt is. After you get done putting everything in those shitty square boxes that they have, everything at Costco is round. All their boxes are square. It doesn't add up. They have this giant square box and you have like one big thing of pretzels and it's like, oh, we got 40 of them, so we'll just keep coming back and forth, I guess, I don't know. Then the lady, you're finally, you've got your kids, you got the cart, you got your square boxes, you got all your round bullshit, and then the lady's like, receipt, you're like, fuck! Go back for the receipt or we're gonna have to live here in Costco. It's like, you know I just shopped here, I have your shitty mango boxes. Put your hands together for moms. What, right? Moms are the best, man. I love my mom. My mom is crazy, crazy. Do you know how little boys grow up to be funny guys? Put your hands together. If you're a lady, put your hands together if your boyfriend or husband is funny. Some of you are like, I'd rather have a guy that makes money. That's how little boys go up to be funny guys, because our moms are fucking nuts. That's how that happens, right? Yeah, look at she's like, you have not met Deborah, okay? My mom was crazy. Like, my whole job as a kid was to make her feel better. I just wrote jokes and songs. She'd come home from a long day of work and be like, watch my dance, mom. I go get your pills for you and your white wine. I know that's what you like. My mom was cool though, my mom was cool. My mom was pissed when she found out I wasn't gay. She always wanted a gay son. I was like, ah, oh, I've just been disappointing her my entire life, you know. She was so thrilled when I moved to San Francisco though. Like, mom, it doesn't work like that. It's not like you're flying in an SFO and the pilot's like, pshh, oh, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be landing in San Francisco in 20 minutes if you could please pull out your glitter and rainbows. And set your dicks to an upright and locked position. the girl crowd is like, I want to move to San Francisco. <laughs> it's not like gay men are walking around San Francisco trying to recruit you for their religion, like the Jehovah's Witnesses or something. They don't come to your door and be like, excuse me, sir, have you accepted cock as your personal savior today? <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't happen like that. Had a good fall, had a really good fall. I went back to my 20th high school reunion. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. Isn't he 50? <laughs> Started kindergarten at 10. It's a late bloomer. High school reunions are weird. Those are weird places. You guys been to your high school reunion? Yeah. Strange fucking thing, right? Because all the hot people got fat. All the fat people are hot, you know? It's so weird. It's weirdo bizarro world when you go. And I never thought I would be asked to go to my high school reunion. Like, for one, they send you a letter, at least my high school sent me a letter saying that in March, my high school reunion would be in September. So I realized that I only had like six months to do something with my life. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh shit, I haven't done anything in 20 years. Oh no. You know? It's like, is there a six months upstairs law center I can go to or something? Because I don't know if this is gonna work out well. Because you know? in high school, put your hands together if you had a shitty time in high school. All right, yeah. Good. My favorite thing is I said, put your hands together, and that back guy back there raised his hand. He still can't follow directions. Um, pick me! Pick me! In high school, I got beat up. I got made fun of. Nobody would talk to me. Make matters worse, I was, I was homeschooled. So... Dad's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, 
on community college, it was bad. It was bad. I'm from the Midwest originally. I'm from the redneck racist area of Michigan called Michigan. Um, anybody here from Michigan? Oh, okay. Chicago's not Michigan. But, but also not good at geography. Um, so, so awesome. Though. Well, good try. It's a good try. When we come back from wait, wait, don't tell me. What up, what up. <laughs> Someone here from Detroit? Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? All right. So, uh, uh, are you from Michigan? What is happening? What is happening? Where, where are you from? Are you, are you in show business? Okay, I'm not going to do that joke either. All right, so you're from LA, and you're pointing, because, okay, what he's doing is, because if you're from Michigan, we point to our hand. Like we, we point to our, because we have shitty public education, and today we think this is a map in Michigan. We're like, I'm from here. I think that's Florida, right there. This is Maine, it's over here, pretty sure. And you're looking right up Chattanooga, Tennessee, lady. I saw a lot of I nicknamed my dick the South because it's gonna rise again! <laughs> and because it's racist. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I went back to high school. As a matter of fact, you know, I have to say, one of my high school friends just walked in to the show, uh, like four hours late, as usual. She's in the back. She, she I, you know, I'm gonna have to make fun of you for coming late, Jana, right? She is the girl that gave me my first hand job. <laughs> Where, where's Jana? There she is at the bar. Yeah, there she is. Jana gave me my first hand job in high school, uh, and she was horrible at it. So, it was fucking horrible, because girls are not good when they give their first hand job. You know, and guys are like, I don't know what's happening, but I like it. Could you take your rings off? You know? Jana tried to give me a hand job. It was like trying to fucking land a helico helicopter in a snowstorm. You know, she just. trying to parallel park a bulldozer. <laughs> I call her Airwolf to this day. Because... <laughs> oh, fuck, we're having a good time. You guys are awesome, man. I love coming up here to do comedy, man. You guys are awesome. Uh, you guys ever live with someone stupid? Yeah, did you just point at him? Yeah. I got a stupid roommate. My, my, my career is going well. But I have a roommate and a chore wheel, so that's cool. My roommate's name is Kenny. Kenny. Not even Kenny with an E, but Kenny with an I. Like skinny without the S. Kenny. That was the dumbest name ever. Kenny. You can't even, sound, you, you can't even say that without sounding stupid. Kenny. Kenny. Kenny just looks like a golden retriever. Where we going? I hate dumb people, man. I'm getting tired of dumb people. Because it's it's exhausting. It's exhausting, especially when they start telling a story. You know that dumb person that tells a story and makes you do all the work like it's a mad lib, it's like a story mad lib. They're like, remember when we went to that place with that girl? We're like, it's your story. I don't even know yet. You haven't said anything yet. There are no nouns in your story right now. I don't know. Kenny is like that, man. He gets his sayings wrong. He does all kinds of... For Christmas, he bought me a reggae album because he knows I like to listen to reggae. I was like, cool, let me roll up a fucking new bed. We'll listen to some reggae. So I put on the album, and the first song went like this. Ba-da-da-dum. ba da da I was like, Kenny, what is this? This isn't reggae. And he said, it is. It's Herb Alert. I said, motherfucker, that's Herb Elpert. That is not... That is not criminal. <laughs> Dumb motherfucker. <laughs> he gets his sayings wrong. You know, those people, we got into an argument. He said, Paco, sometimes you just gotta let guide dogs be guide dogs. I'm like, it's bygones be bygones. <laughs> Kenny, get him. Get him. 
Although that is a good sentiment, you should just let guide dogs be guide dogs. But you know, they're there at work, they got places to go, they have those vests on, you know. So I, I did go back home to Michigan. I just want to leave you guys a little something like this. I went back home to, uh, to see my dad. My dad passed away a bunch of years ago. I went back to his tombstone. I realized that on his tombstone it had his birthday and it had his, his death date. And then it had that hyphen. I was realizing the birth date means nothing. Your death date nothing, doesn't mean anything either. What's important is that hyphen in between, right? That hyphen is your life. Guys, I really want you to have the best hyphen you can have. I want you guys to go out there and fucking do your hyphen that you can. All right, guys? Seriously. Have the best goddamn hyphen you can, man. Have some fun. Now, if you guys are interested, I got a romaine. This is me, pocket romaine. I got a romaine t-shirt that I can sell 20 bucks over here. And I know Heather has some t-shirts as well. If you want to meet us over here in the corner, we have t-shirts for sale. Come on by. Say hi. Don't buy a fucking t-shirt. Give me a hug or some shit. You know, if you want, you guys have been awesome. I'm Papa Romain. Have a good night. Thank you, Lisa. The last girl. Have a great night. Good night.